from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of IBM Think 2021. Brought to you by IBM. Hello, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of IBM Think 2021 virtual. We're not yet in real life. We're doing another remote interviews with two great guests, CUBE alumni. Um, of course, I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We've got Jason McGee, IBM fellow VP and CTO of IBM's cloud platform, and Octavian Tanasi, senior vice president, hybrid cloud engineering at NetApp, both CUBE alumni. It's great to see you both. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks for having us. So we were just talking before we came on camera that you know, we've, it feels like we've had this conversation you know, a long time ago, we have. Hybrid cloud has been on a trajectory for both of you guys and many times on theCUBE. So now it's mainstream. It's here in the real world, everyone gets it. It's not, there's no real debate. Now multi-cloud, people are debating that, which means that's right around the corner. So hybrid cloud is here and now. Um, Jason, this is really the, the focus and this is also brings together NetApp in, the, in your partnership and talk about the relationship first with hybrid cloud. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, uh, we've talked to a number of times together, I think it, in the industry, uh, maybe maybe a few years ago, people were debating whether hybrid cloud was a real thing. We, we don't have that conversation anymore. I think, um, you know, enterprises today, especially maybe in the face of COVID and kind of how we work differently um, now, realize that um, their cloud journey is going to be a mix of on-prem and off-prem systems, probably going to be a mix of multiple public cloud providers. Um, and what they're looking for now is, you know, how do I do that? I mean, how do I uh, manage that hybrid environment? How do I have a consistent platform across the different environments I want to operate in? Um, and then how do I get more and more of my workload into those environments? And it's been interesting. I think the first the first waves of cloud were infrastructure centric and externally application focused. They were easier things. And now we're moving into more mission critical, more stateful, more data oriented workloads. Uh, and that brings with it new challenges on where applications run and, and how we leverage the cloud. Octavia, you guys had a great relationship with IBM over the years. Uh, data centric company, NetApp has always been great engineering team. You're on the cloud, hybrid cloud engineering. What's the current status of the relationship? Give us an update on how the, it's vectoring into the hybrid cloud since you're a senior vice president of hybrid cloud engineering. Well, so first of all, I want to recognize 20 years of a successful partnership with, with IBM. I think um, NetApp and IBM have been companies that have um, embraced digital transformation and technology trends to enable that digital transformation for our customers. And we've been very successful. I think there is a very strong um, joint hybrid cloud value proposition for customers. Uh, NetApp's storage and data services complement what IBM does in terms of products and, and solutions, both for on-premise deployments and, and the cloud. I think um, together we can build more complete solutions, uh, solutions that span data mobility, data governance uh, for the new workload that uh, Jason has talked about. And how are some of the customer challenges that you're seeing, obviously software-defined networking, software-defined storage, uh, DevOps has now turned into DevSecOps. So you have now, that programmability requirement with for dynamic applications, application driven infrastructure, all these buzzwords point to one thing. The infrastructure has to be resilient and respond to the applications. Yeah, I would yeah, say so. that, uh, infrastructure, you know, will continue to be, uh, you know, top of mind for everybody, whether they're building a, a private, uh, you know, cloud or whether they're, um, you know, trying to leverage, um, you know, something like IBM cloud. I think uh, you know people want to consume um, you know infrastructure as an API. I think they want uh, simplicity, you know, security. I, I think they want to manage their cost, you know, very well. I think um, we're we're very proud to to be partnering with uh, with IBM Cloud to build uh, such capabilities. Jason, what's how are you guys helping some of these customers as they look at new things and sometimes retrofitting and refactoring previous stuff, during transforming, but also innovating at the same time. There's a lot of that going on. What are you guys doing to help with the hybrid challenges? Yeah, I mean, one, you know, there's a lot of dimensions to that problem, but the, the one that, that I think has been kind of most interesting over the last year has been how um, kind of the consumption model of public cloud, you know, API driven self-service capabilities uh, operated for you, uh, how that consumption model is starting to spread. Because I think one of the challenges with hybrid and one of the challenges as customers are looking at these, you know, more mission critical data centric kind of workloads was, well, I, 
I can't always move that application to the public cloud data center, or I need that application to live out on the network, you know, closer to my end users, you know, out where data is being generated, maybe in an IoT context. And when you had those requirements, you had to kind of switch operating models. You, you had to kind of move away from a public cloud service consumption model to a software deployment model. And you know, we, we have a common platform in things like OpenShift uh, that can run everywhere, but the missing piece was how do I consume everything as a service everywhere? And so recently we've launched this thing called IBM Cloud Satellite, which we've been working with Octavian and his team on, um, on how we can actually extend the public cloud experience back into the data center, out to the edge, um, and allow people to kind of mix both location flexibility with uh, public cloud consumption. And when you do that, you of course run in a much more diverse infrastructure environment. Um, you have to integrate with different storage environments and you wind up with like multi-tier applications, you know, some stuff on the edge and some stuff in the core. And so data replication and data management start to become really interesting because you're kind of distributing your workloads across this more complex environment. Yeah, we've seen that relationship between compute and storage change a lot over the past decade uh, as the evolution goes. Octavian, I got to ask you, this is critical path for companies. They, they want the storage ready infrastructure. You guys have been doing that for many, many decades, partnering with IBM for sure, but now they're all getting hybrid cloud uh, big time. And it's not, it's attributed computing is what it is. It's an operating model. When someone asks you guys what your capabilities are, how do you answer that in today's world? Because you have storage, it's well known, you got a great product, people know that, but what is NetApp's capabilities when I say I'm going all in on hybrid cloud, complete changeover? So what we have been doing is um, basically rewriting a lot of our software with a few design points in mind. Um, the software defined has been definitely, you know, one of the key design points. The second is the um, the hybrid cloud and the containerization of our operating system so they can run both in traditional environments as well as in the cloud. I think um, the, the last thing that we wanted to do, it's enable the speed of scale. And uh, that has been by building, um, you know, intrinsically in the, in, the, in the product, both support or in also using uh, Kubernetes as an infrastructure to achieve that agility, that, that scale. Talk about this data fabric vision, because to me, this is, comes up all the time in my conversations with practitioners. The number one problem that they're, a problem that they're solving to solve in the conversation tends to, I hear words like control plane, Kubernetes, horizontally scalable. This all points to data being available. So how do you create that availability? What does data fabric mean? What does all this mean in a hybrid context? Well, if you, if you think about it, data fabric, it's a hybrid cloud you know, concept, right? This is about enabling uh, data governance, data mobility, data security in an environment where some of the applications will run um, on premises or at the edge of the smart edge. And um, many of the, uh, you know, perhaps data lakes and analytics, um, you know, and services, rich services will be in a central locations or on many, or perhaps some large, uh, you know, data centers. So you need to have, you know, the type of, uh, you know, capabilities, data services, you know, to enable that mobility, that governments, governance, that, that security across this continuum that spans the edge, the core and, and the cloud. Jason, you mentioned satellite before cloud satellite. Could you go into more detail on it? I know it's kind of a new product. Um, yeah. What is that about? And, and tell me what's the benefits and why does it exist and what problems does it solve? Yeah, so, so in the most simple terms, uh, cloud satellite is, is the capability to extend IBM's public cloud into on-prem infrastructure, infrastructure at the edge, or in a multi-cloud context to other public cloud infrastructures. And so you can consume all the services in the public cloud that you need to, to build your application, you know, OpenShift as a service, databases, dev tools, AI capabilities, instead of being limited to only being able to consume those services in IBM's re, you know, cloud regions, you can now add your private data center or add your Metro provider or you know, add your AWS or Azure account and now consume those services consistently across all those environments. Um, and that really allows you to kind of combine uh, the benefits of public cloud with the kind of location independence you see in hybrid and lets us solve new problems. Like, you know, it's really interesting. We're seeing uh, like AI and data being a primary driver. You know, I, I need my application 
to live in a certain country or to live next to my mainframe or to live like, you know, in a metro because all of my, you know, I'm doing like video analytics on a bunch of cameras and I'm not going to stream all that data back to, you know, halfway across the country to some cloud region. Uh, and so it lets you extend out in that way. And when you do that, of course, you now move the cloud into a more diverse infrastructure environment. And so like we've been working with NetApp on how do we then expose um, NetApp storage into this environment. When I'm running in the data center or I'm running at the edge and I need to store that data, replicate the data, secure it, well, how do I kind of plug those two things together? I think, John, at the beginning, you kind of alluded to this idea of, you know, things are becoming more application centric, right? And we're trying to run an IT architecture that's more centered around the application. Well, by combining um, Cloud's knowledge of kind of where everything's running with a common platform like OpenShift with a Kubernetes aware data fabric and storage layer, you really can achieve that. You can have an application centric kind of management model that spans those environments. Yeah, I want to come back to that whole impact on IT because this has come up as a major theme here. Think that the IT transformation is going to be more about cloud scale, but I want to get to Octavian on the satellite, on NetApp's role and how you complement that. How do you guys fit in? He just mentioned that you guys are playing with cloud satellite. Obviously this looks like an operating model. How does NetApp fit in? Um, simply put, we extend and enable the capabilities that um, IBM satellite uh, you know, platform provides. I, I think uh, Jason referred to the storage aspects um, and you know, what we are doing, it's enabling not only storage, but rich data services around uh, you know, tiering based on temperature or um, you know, uh, replicated snapshots or um, you know, capabilities around you know, caching, you know, high availability, encryption and, and so forth. So we believe that um, our, our technology integrate very well with Red Hat OpenShift um, and um, the Kubernetes aspect enable the, the application mobility and, and that translation of uh, really distributed computing at scale, you know, from, um, you know, from the traditional data center um, to the edge and, uh, you know, to the, the massive hubs that IBM is building. You know, I got to say, I've been watching you guys work together for many uh, decades now and, and covering you with theCUBE for the past 10 years or 11 years now, um, been a great partnership. I got to say one thing that's uh, obviously to, obvious to me and our team and mainly, mainly the world is now you got a new CEO over at IBM, you have a cloud focus that's un, un, unwavering. He, Arvind loves the cloud, we all know that. Yeah. Um, ecosystems are changing with that. You're, IBM already had a big ecosystem and partnerships. Now it seems to be moving to a level where you got to have that ecosystem to really thrive in the cloud. So I guess we'll use the last couple of minutes if you guys don't mind explaining how the IBM NetApp relationship in the new context of this new partnership, a new ecosystem or a new kind of world uh, helps customers and how you guys are working together. Yeah, I mean, I could start. I, I mean, I think you're right that, that, you know, cloud is all about platforms and about kind of the overall environment people operate in and the ecosystem is really critical. And I think things like satellite have given us new ways to work together. I mean, IBM and NetApp, as we said, have been working together for a long time. We, we rely on them a lot in our public cloud, for example, in our storage tiers, but with, with the, kind of idea of distributed cloud and the boundaries of public cloud spreading to all these new environments, those are just new places where we can build really interesting, valuable integrations for our clients so that they can deal with data, deal with these more complex apps, you know, in all the places that they exist. So I think it's been actually really exciting um, to kind of leverage that opportunity to find, you know, new ways to work together and, and, uh, and deliver solutions for our clients. Octavian. I would say that uh, data is the ecosystem. And um, uh, we all know that there is more data right now being created outside of the traditional data center, be it in the cloud or at the edge. Um, so our mission is you know, to enable that you know, hybrid cloud or, or that uh, you know, data mobility um, and enable you know, persistence, rich data you know, storage uh, services, uh, whatever data is being you know, created. I think um, IBM's uh, new satellite, you know, platform, um, you know, comes in and broadens the the aperture of of people being able to consume IBM's services at, at the edge and uh, or or the remote office, and I think that's very exciting. You guys are both experts and solely seasoned executives, Dev DevOps, DevSecOps, Dev Data Ops, whatever you want to call. It. 
data is here, our ecosystems. Guys, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate the insight. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, IBM Think, CUBE coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.